Hi guys, back with another video for you today and I've got a brand new house I'm talking about on the channel. Well, they're not really a brand new house, but they're brand new to the channel. I've never spoken about them before. Sule Manteau, which basically translates to under the coat, a French niche house that I first discovered in January of 2019. I discovered their fragrances because I thought their colorful bottles really stood out. I discovered them in uh, the store Print Up in Paris. Move forward to April, May. I visited Paris again. I saw them there once more time. And then also going to uh, October of 2019, I saw them there again. Fast forward to now, the store here in San Francisco, the perfume shop, ZGO Perfumery, is carrying the fragrances. And I'm going to let you know about five of their fragrances in their collection today. Plus, ZGO Perfumery is sponsoring a full bottle giveaway to a subscriber of this channel from the USA. So if you want to find out about Sue Le Manteau, Under the Coat Fragrances, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Yes, this is a new house. To me, they're mostly new, but they've been around since 2016. At least I read that one of one or a few of their fragrances have been around since then. But they're just now making their way here to the States. And as I said, they are sold at ZGO Perfumery uh, in San Francisco. So if you're around here, definitely stop in to check out this collection of fragrances or any of their new uh, other new houses that they've brought in to uh, the city here in San Francisco. We've got some great perfume shops. Uh, definitely ZGO Perfumery is a... Uh, um, a prime retail uh, for perfumes uh, or perfume lovers so there you'll discover some great fragrances and these are there so I'm gonna let you know about the five fragrances in the collection but before I do if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed to the channel please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways one of the themes in the on my channel here I'd like to do is uh, discuss a new houses that I've never discussed and introduce new houses to you guys that you guys uh, probably have never heard about. And these ones I kept coming back to, as I said, three times in uh, 2019 in Paris, but now they're here. And also a couple times I've gone to ZGO Perfumery, I kept coming back to them. But these do take a little time to get used to. The fragrances were not jumping out at me, so I did put them to test quite a bit. And I fell in love with three of them after they're testing them out and really, uh, you know, kind of embracing the fragrances studying them and to see uh, what they're all about. They're a little subdued experiences, but once you actually start wearing them and familiarizing yourself with them, they definitely do stand out. And also I should say they're a little on the powdery side, some more than others, so these are definitely powdery fragrances and I do enjoy powdery fragrances and uh, I've fallen in love with three of the most powdery uh, fragrances in the collection but I think the, the collection overall is a powdery experience. Uh, so these are sold at ZGO Perfumer as I said I have a link in the info box and they have set up a 15% off discount code SLM. If you're curious you can go over there and check them out and take advantage of the discount code but there is a special discount code perfume guy that saves you 15% off a lot of the other fragrances. Not every fragrance brand. Double check with ZGO Perfumery to make sure that um, which brands uh, you can take advantage of uh, with the discount code. But for this particular video, they have set up a special discount code for Sule Manto and it's SLM. It'll save you 15% off. So the fragrances are 50 ml for $130, Auto Parfum Concentration, and they are all created by Natalie Festauer. And I'm familiar with her. I've actually met her several times. She's a very nice lady, and I've rec come to recognize her fragrances and her signature. And she's done some fragrances not only for famous brands or you know popular uh, more designer and also uh, niche brands but definitely she's on her own she does her own perfumes and she does some great work and as i said i've fallen in love with the top three fragrances here i'm ranking this list and we're going to go ahead and get started with essence du Cereal, this one right here but i do want to say one more thing about the brand the fragrances are all based on 19th century love potions from france this is uh, something I took from their website. 
very unique concept. So essence to surreals translates to essence of the harem. Very interesting concept, right? Now this one I ranked at number five. This one didn't do it for me as much as the other fragrances did, but this is a floral powdery experience and it has notes of orange blossom, ylang ylang, peach, plum, jasmine, vanilla, ambrette, sandalwood, and heliotrope. And with this one, you definitely experience orange blossom, which is basically running the show, but it's nicely blended with the ylang ylang, this kind of a lightly tropical yellow flower. Then throw in the fruits. There's a peachiness, there's a plumminess about it, but a little more peach than plums with this one. But then you've got more white flowers from the jasmine note in here. And I think jasmine, orange blossom really do work beautifully together. In fact, fruity floral fragrances are perfect. I would call this a fruity floral powdery fragrance experience but don't worry there's some uh, warmth in here and some muskiness as well there's some vanilla with that kind of lightly medicinal ambrette note that adds this kind of like uh, fruity a little lightly boozy muskiness with that ambrette note here and then throw in some sandalwood and heliotrope and you've got a Pretty beautiful composition. Again, this is my least favorite of the bunch. I prefer the others a little more, but definitely uh, once you test these fragrances out, this might be one of your favorites. So this is Essence of the Harem, which is the translation from the name Essence du Sorel. A little complicated, so I had to look up the names and things like that, but it makes sense uh, with what they've created here. So Essence du Sorel is at number five. So the next fragrance in the beautiful red bottle, is Vapors Diablotines, which translates to devilish vapors. So this is an amber fragrance, and I thought this would end up more towards the top, but somehow I've ended up putting it here at number four because I prefer the other three a little more, but I really do love the standout color of this bottle. Beautiful red, bright, totally stands out, and I like it because all these bottles are matte, and I love this the fact that they've done matte finish with all the bottles because they definitely photograph a lot better with these kind of shiny bottles. You know, I'm an Instagrammer. I Instagram photos of bottles. They definitely do not reflect. Well, they reflect a little bit, but not like some of the other bottles that have like shiny glass and things like that. But either way, this is Vapor's Diablotines and it uh, again, translates to devilish vapors, but it features notes of labdanum, bay leaves, cloves, vetiver, vanilla, benzoin, patchouli, coriander, incense, geranium, styrax, castorium, and animalic notes. Lots going on here. In the end, it's an amber, but it's contrasted with more aromatic green kind of spicy herbal notes. The bay leaves do pop here and they do give you that kind of like um, lightly camphoric herbal spiciness that bay leaves are known to provide. And then you've got lots of cloves here and that grassy earthy vetiver comes in as well. So it's a woody, spicy, and definitely ambery experience, but lots of vanilla with this one as well. So it contrasts beautifully with the ambery touches. The labdanum in here is a little smoky. Then of course, benzoin complements the vanilla as well. Benzoin provides this kind of resinous vanillic touch to the fragrance. Of course, you've got to add the patchouli in here. Patchouli is beautiful. You definitely notice the patchouli with this one. And then of course, lots more spices and incense and aromatic notes. So yes, I had a hard time deciding between this at number four or the one at number three at number four. But in the end, I put this one here uh, because number three did it a little more for me than um, Vapors Diablotines, the devilish vapors, which is at number two. Okay, at number three, it is Fontaine Royale, which translates to Royal Fountain. So this and the rest are my three favorites from the house. And with two and one, kind of close to one another, three a little distant, but uh, Fountain Royale is really, really yummy with orris, labdanum, sandalwood, musk, vanilla, ambrette, geranium, cedar, rose, jasmine, bergamot, and styrax. So this is potentially the most powderiest because it features auris, but there is, there's definitely butteriness in here. You definitely really experience the kind of light vegetal butteriness of the auris. Contrasted with that labdanum, once again, it's the, the note that's used to create ambery touches. So this is definitely an ambery fragrance, lightly smoky with the labdanum. Throw in the creamy, lightly milky sandalwood in here as well and musk. And you pretty much have what the prominent players are with this fragrance, but you've got some vanilla here. It is sweet and syrupy as well. Ambrette, again, once again comes up, and I love Ambrette. 
Uh, and even though the fragrances that I'm speaking about that feature ambrette are not focusing on ambrette, you experience the muskiness and definitely ambrette provides this kind of, uh, I always think ambrette smells a little medicinal, also has a light booziness, a little fruitiness. So you get those light nuances in here with the ambrette, but there's also lots of other things happening. You get the light aromatic touches from the geranium, woods from the cedar, and that's pretty much it with this fragrance, but it's a gorgeous fragrance. Fragrance. Again, I had a hard time uh, deciding between these two in the end, this one went over. But originally, I had a little more of a challenge with number two and number three, but later I kept wearing them. I ended up thinking one and two are definitely uh, ahead of three and four. So in the end, Fontaine Royale, number three, it deserves a number three spot. And uh, I hope you guys get to try these fragrances. Uh, it's a brand uh, that's just as I said, getting their way out here in the States. Uh, and uh, if you're around San Francisco, definitely stop in and smell them because they do, they do definitely take a little time to get used to, but once you get used to them, uh, I think there are some fragrances that are amazing here with this house. All right, the last two are the best from this house for me. And at number two, it's Poudre Imperial. So this one has the word Poudre in it. Imperial powder is basically what it translates to. And as I said, for me, the brand has a powdery touch to them. All the fragrances, this might sound like it has the most powderiness because of the name, but I think number three is a little more powdery to me than this. This one to me takes me down the memory lane. Like it brings back memories and I don't know where they're coming from. As a smell, this reminds me of some stuff I smelled before and uh, also kind of conjures up uh, memories of my younger years, but I can't think of what this reminds me of, but it reminds me of something which is actually very, very positive for me. Poudre Imperial, Imperial Powder features notes of pink pepper, alumi resin, heliotrope, black pepper, cardamom, cedar, benzoin, musk, tonka beans, vanilla, lily of the valley, incense, and jasmine. A lot is going on here, but this is a really, really perfect fragrance. Definitely powdery, but also very, very spicy and resinous. Pink pepper and black pepper do come in here a lot. And I'm not the biggest fan of black pepper, but I'm really enjoying it here, contrasted with the kind of light rosy nuances of the pink pepper. Heliotrope is here, and heliotrope adds light almondiness. When I put my nose to it, I'm picking up light powdery, lightly vanillic almondiness from heliotrope, and I like that about this one but go to the extent of adding a little spicy aromatic touch from the cardamom in here as well. But you know, there's benzoin, there's tonka, there's vanilla in here as well, and musk, of course, and overall a beautiful, beautiful composition. Very, very powdery once again, but uh, I think this one, although I should say all three of the, I think the least powdery for me was Vapor's Dioblatines, but the rest of them are pretty powdery. Uh, definitely experience the powderiness. Even number one has lots of powdery touches, but definitely Poudre Imperial deserves the number two spot with number one being my all-time favorite from this house. And again, for me, it took a little while to embrace and enjoy the fragrances because I had to learn them. They were a little, not challenging fragrances whatsoever. They're just a little subdued in their experience to me, but once you get to know them, uh, you're gonna find some favorites. Either way, Poudre Imperial is number two. And my favorite of the bunch is uh, Queer de Orient. This one right here translates to leather from the Orient. So it's yellow. Do you see the color? I think it stands for vanilla. At least to me, it stands for vanilla. It's kind of like an orangey yellow, but more yellow to me. But this features notes of suede leather, vanilla, benzoin, apopanax, patchouli, orris, heliotrope, musk, ambrette. This is a, a really delicious, powdery, but yet lightly syrupy, rich vanilla experience with suede leather that's kind of buttery. That's mostly what you get with this one. That's why it's called Leather from the Orient or Queer to Orient. And you experience that a lot. Lots of uh, suede leather touches. And then of course the benzoin with the vanilla and the apopanax really work beautifully together. These two sweet resins complement the vanilla. So they add the balsamic resinous touches, syrupy vanilla powdery touches in here as well. So you've got patchouli in here as well 
well. And I think patchouli, resins, and vanilla work wonderfully together. They're a match made in heaven. And then of course this one also has the orris note. So there's a little bit more of a butteriness in here as well, which also, you know, contributes to the powderiness to the fragrance. Heliotrope once again as well. So you've got the light almondy touches with this one. It's a beautiful blend, very, very powdery, very warm, very rich, buttery, leathery, cozy. Very, very cozy with this one. I think it's a, a fall, autumn, maybe even winter uh, appropriate fragrance. In fact, I should go to the extent of saying all these fragrances probably are more fall winter wear, uh, except for perhaps this one. Uh, Essence de Surreal might be um, the more, you know, warmer weather uh, experience. The fact that they're kind of like dense fragrances, powdery fragrances come off dense to me. Uh, I think uh, they're more like, you know, cooler weather fragrances. And even though I said they're a little subdued, and I think the subdued part comes in uh, for me to experience them, maybe because I had anosmia to them, I don't know, but they're definitely intense and dense fragrances, but they don't pop if that makes sense. So you definitely need to put your nose on them and really, really get to know them to experience them. But once you do and you like vanilla and powdery fragrances with leather, uh, you're probably going to like uh, Krita Orient. I think it's really, really delicious, perfectly cozy for a cool, cool night, you know, when you're at home and you want to get comfortable in front of the TV or something or with a book. Definitely spray some of that stuff and you'll be uh, in uh, cozy heaven. Anyway, those are my thoughts on these five fragrances from the house of Sule Manteau. Have you guys heard of this house? Do you know them? Have you tried them? Have you experienced them? Let me know. Put a comment down. And if you have a favorite from the house, let me know as well. Like I said, put a comment down so I can find out. Now on to the giveaway. Uh, we're doing one bottle giveaway thanks to ZGO Perfumery. And these fragrances were sent to me for this specific review. But the opinion's all my own. This, these are my own opinions and I'm giving them to you as I have, uh, you know, experienced the fragrances and how the, I experienced them myself. So these are all honest opinions for myself and hopefully you guys will experience them similarly as well. But we have one bottle giveaway thanks to ZGO Perfumery. Uh, all you have to do is put a comment down below to let me know what you liked about this review and also let me know which fragrance you like and you will select as uh, your prize if you are the winner. Now if more than one fragrance sounds uh, like a, it's a you know winner to you, put down which one you would like to claim as your prize and then also let me know which other one sounds great to you. On top of that, please put down your state so you can qualify and please, please, please make sure you're subscribed. Other than that, good luck with the giveaway and uh, otherwise, please like this video, please share it, follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Glad you stuck around because I forgot to mention this really, really unique thing that comes in the boxes of the fragrances from Sule Manteau. They come with a perfume ceramic that's uh, in the box, like right here. If you guys don't know what perfume ceramics are, basically I've gotten these myself from various brands and they're unscented and you can basically spray it with a perfume and hang it in your closet over the hangers with your favorite perfume. I kind of over spray it, spray it a lot with a perfume and let it stay there and that part of the closet will smell like the, your favorite perfume kind of a thing. So each box uh, comes in uh, with, uh, you know, of course the, the fragrance like that and the perfume ceramic is here like this. It comes with a pamphlet as well of all the fragrances like that. And then this uh, is outside of the box, this little um, uh, informational and in the name uh, card. And then the box uh, is closed like this. And if I can get this on, I will show you the full presentation and how it's uh, supposed to be. I got it. So basically this is how the fragrance um, is, uh, you know, purchased or received uh, in the mail. So that is Queer to Orient, my favorite from the house. And I'm glad you stuck around to see the little perfume ceramic, which you can use in your own closet. Anyway, all the info for ZGO Perfumery is in the info box with discount codes and everything. Thanks so much. Have a good one. Goodbye.